Attention, Colombia. What I am going to tell you today is so outrageous that it could be the biggest scandal of Gustavo Petro's government. Corruption in the risk management unit? That's right. The tentacles of corruption reach higher than we ever imagined. High government officials, millions missing, and a plot that seems straight out of a thriller. But it's not fiction. While honest citizens work their asses off, the top brass plays with our money and walks around in impunity. How far does this rot go? Who will fall first? Prepare your popcorn because what follows is worthy of a reality show where betrayal, lies, and theft are the protagonists. The Minister of Finance, Ricardo Bonilla, asked for it by interrogation. Welcome, Colombians, to the latest edition of Who Are the Good Guys? Today we bring you a scandal that would make even a soap opera scriptwriter blush. Today's topic, the risk management unit, which ironically seems to have the biggest risk from corruption itself. That's right, hold on, this is getting interesting. The prosecution has decided that it's time to open Pandora's box, and they're not joking. They've warned that they won't rule out summoning high-ranking officials from Gustavo Petro's government to tell them what they know about this monumental mess, and that they shouldn't forget the coffee and cookies, because this is going to drag on. We're talking about people like the Minister of Finance, Ricardo Bonilla, who must be more nervous than a cat in a glass shop. And no wonder, because the mentions of his name already smell like an interrogation. And of course, all this is tangled up with the arrests of Snyder Pinilla and Olmedo Lopez, former directors of the unit. These two are the protagonists of our corruption soap opera, and it seems that the prosecution is calling them to testify, as if they were in the final of La Voz, but with more pressure. More than five officials have already been arrested, and things are getting hotter than a stew in December. If we have learned anything in Colombia, it is that corruption does not rest. It is like the dog that never tires of barking, and that always bothering the neighbors. The prosecution assures that more arrests will come, and the question here is, who will be next on the list? Everyone is looking at each other as if they were in a game of pass the hot potato to see who dares to speak first. And meanwhile, those in power must be thinking, how did we miss this? Because of course, it is not normal that so many irregularities are uncovered and that the government stands there watching as if nothing happened. This lacks a bit of drama, gentlemen. The names keep appearing and the drama increases. The prosecution mentions other high officials who could be subpoenaed. And the situation is so tense that it seems they are preparing for a grand finale. The director of DAPRE, Carlos Ramon Gonzalez, also appears on the horizon. Is he the next to receive a call? One can imagine him sitting in his office with the phone shaking as if it were one of those old typewriters. In addition, there is the defense of Minister Bonilla, who has already asked to be heard. I can imagine the scene. Bonilla, with a soft, trembling voice, saying, please, let me tell my version. But the funny thing here is that everyone is asking to be heard as if they were the heroes of the movie, while the prosecution rubs its hands, ready to unmask the real villains. And we can't forget the witnesses. In this case, we have Olmo Lopez and Pedro Rodriguez, who are more involved in this mess than family gossip. They are negotiating with the prosecution, and their future is as uncertain as the weather in Bogota. The prosecution has offered them a chance, but that doesn't mean they will get away with it. The safe conduct story is never that easy. These three witnesses now have to decide whether to become informants or go down with the ship. These three witnesses now have to decide whether to become informants or go down with the ship. But the funniest thing of all is that even if they are offered a way out, there is always a price to pay. And this is where it gets interesting. Will they end up in a detention center or on a beach sunbathing? What a dilemma. Meanwhile, we Colombians sit in the front row of this show. And with each new twist, the scandal becomes more intriguing. Are we facing the biggest corruption scandal of the Gustavo Petro government? The prosecution continues to investigate and the drama continues. So my friends, let's keep our popcorn ready and our attention on what happens. Because here in Colombia, politics is never boring. And as the saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. But not here. Here what we do is watch and laugh. Because despite everything, we have to admit that Colombian politics is a real show. So let's stay tuned because this soap opera is just beginning. Let's see what more surprises this tragic comedy called Risk Management brings us. Opinions from the opposition. Colombia, that beautiful country where politics is one of those soap operas that make Yo Soy Betty, La Fea look like a documentary about life in the jungle. And today, on the center stage, we have the scandal of the Risk Management Unit, which is not only poorly managed, but seems to have been written by a soap opera scriptwriter with a penchant for black comedy. Pass me the popcorn. First, what can we say about the current situation? The prosecution has decided to open Pandora's box and is already doing its job with more energy than a child on his birthday. There is talk of more arrests of high officials of the Petro government who could be held accountable. And who are these brave men? Oh yes, the Minister of Finance, Ricardo Bonilla, and other cronies who are probably already desperately looking for a lawyer to do them a little favor. 
in this game of who is the most corrupt, there are more names than on a list of attendees at a reggaeton concert. And while some fall, others look for a way to stay afloat as best they can. I imagine Bonilla sweating more than a fish on the beach, praying that the prosecutor's office doesn't fall on him like a vendor of empanadas during the week of the strike. It's not easy to be part of the cabinet when things are getting tense. And DAPRE, that organization that sounds like a club of friends who get together to watch soccer games, has become the epicenter of the scandal. Carlos Ramon Gonzalez, its director, must be feeling like a character from La Casa de Papel, hoping that he won't be exposed at the next meeting. Is there an instruction manual on how to manage the risk of going to jail? Because here, it seems that they have forgotten that. What is most surprising is that, amidst all this mess, some of these officials still dare to ask to be heard, as if they were the innocent in a suspense movie. Please, let me explain, they will say. But at this point, the only valid explanation is, why didn't we report it before? Of course, we cannot expect these high officials to behave like decent citizens. Because in this country, being a public servant and being decent are concepts that do not usually go hand in hand. Now, let's talk about the witnesses. Ah, the witnesses, those who are always willing to save their skin. Olmo Lopez and Pedro Rodriguez are there, looking for a chance, like someone looking for a coffee in the fridge. And don't be surprised if in their search, they come across a prison, because that is also part of the package. Nothing like a good put it on or take it off offer. While they look for a way to stay afloat, the prosecution plays musical chairs, moving pieces on a board where everyone seems guilty. One cannot help but wonder if there is a competition to see who is the most cunning in this macabre dance. Because let's be honest, the risk management scandal has become a spectacle worthy of a circus. But what worries me most is the ordinary people, those Colombians who go out to work every day, who struggle to get ahead while these officials worry more about their own interests than the well-being of the country. While they dance to the tune of corruption, the people continue to deal with the effects of an economy that gives no respite. And we, as the opposition, must continue to raise our voices, not only for ourselves, but for those millions of Colombians who deserve better. So here we are, watching this scandal with more attention than a TV fan waiting for the next episode of their favorite series. Politics has become a soap opera full of unexpected twists, betrayals, and a cast that would make even the best actors in Hollywood blush. As the plot unfolds, it is essential to remember that this is not just coffee gossip, but a situation that affects everyone. Corruption not only steals money, but also the people's trust in their leaders. How many more reforms are needed for these officials to understand that their job is not a game of I give you, you give me, give. So, in this chaotic scenario, let's remain vigilant. Let's keep sarcasm at hand and constructive criticism on the agenda. Because in the end, the real risk is to let corruption become normalized as part of the Colombian landscape. And that, my friends, is a risk we cannot afford. Let's keep fighting. Colombians, what we have seen today is not just another isolated case of corruption. It is living proof of how our country is being bled dry from the highest spheres of power. While some line their pockets, the people suffer the consequences of a management full of irregularities and betrayals. We are not talking about just one more scandal, but a direct blow to the trust that citizens place in their leaders. This is not a government for the people, it is a government that plays with the people. And well, friends, here we are for today, but I assure you that this is not over. The corruption show is just beginning. Do not be fooled, let us be vigilant, and let us not allow this kind of scandal to go unpunished. If you want to be informed, if you want to know the truth behind the headlines, subscribe to our channel right now and activate the bell so that you do not miss a single detail of the next chapters of this political soap opera. And please share this video with all your friends, family and acquaintances. Let the truth reach every corner of Colombia. Together, we can uncover the lies and bring down the corrupt. See you in the next video.